guys, I'm Evan Espet, a uh, streamer of rugby player. You're watching Gareth Mason on Walking Tour with G-Man. What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video we are going back to Six Nations Rugby and this whole relegation promotion game talk because I see it's come back a little bit in the media and I know we've got this Nations Championship that's on the cards for 2021 or 23 or whenever it is. But the reason why I want to bring it back is because with the World Cup coming up, obviously you've got the Six Nations and then you've got the Tier 2 Six Nations, which includes of all the, the other European sides like Georgia, who's been in the, the news quite a bit, um, especially because they're up and coming, they're showing a lot of potential growth, development, and um, we all know Italy have been on the bottom of the log for quite a number of years now. And the question keeps asking, oh, how? what are we doing in order to develop Tier 2 rugby? Um, will, will putting this in place, like a promotion relegation game, will that be this, the problem, or well, not the problem, this, the, the solving of the problems of making the Tier 2 games more competitive? Because it gives them a reason to, to really play out of their socks so that they can join the Six Nations. Now... A couple of years ago, it used to be Scotland and Italy um, really going at it for the wooden spoon. But now Scotland's developed and got stronger. Whereas Italy, unfortunately, although they didn't have the worst Six Nations, they still ended up bottom of the log and haven't had the greatest run. So in order to shake things up, do we put in a promotion relegation game? Do we go back to the Five Nations opposed to Six Nations? Um, or do we implement this and let Georgia have a go at uh, playing in the Six Nations. I think it's never going to solve the issue of competitiveness. Um, um, I think it's always going to be a wooden spoon um, situation between Italy and Georgia. It's going to be them fighting it out every year. And one year you might have Georgia, one year you might have Italy. It all depends on how uh, the development of rugby is within both um, countries. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a history man. I've always known it to be Six Nations. Obviously, I know before it was five, etc., etc. But um, I, I would rather stick to where, what it's been and just hope that it gets more competitive for the Italians and that they can put up a fight again and um, do things differently, whether they can really challenge a team like Scotland or France um, or England, Wales or even Ireland. I mean, it, just to give that momentum... But, um, or do you go back to five nations where you've got your normal teams just minus Italy? It will be a hell of a lot more competitive, I think, uh, because you might see the various nations fight a lot harder in order to pick up a victory because you don't want to be on that wooden spoon end. I mean, then you've got a situation of maybe France, maybe England, Scotland, Wales, who, who knows, um, Ireland being at the wooden spoon because it's so competitive now. I mean, Scotland... Um, really are have improved a lot from where they were. They had a few injuries in this past Six Nations, but they really developed last year. I mean, they beat England for the first time in how many years? They showed a lot of class and character. And I think we, we, we've seen them come a long way. So we can't quite say they are the, 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 the battle of the wooden spoon between them and Italy, like one would have said maybe five, six, years, seven years ago. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough debate, and I think everyone's going to have their own opinion on it. Um, I think the traditionals will want to keep it Six Nations. You've got, obviously, the Italian fans that want to keep it in. But then you've also got the people who want to develop the lower um, rugby nations, like the Tier 2 level, to, to give them an opportunity at something big. And um, I think what, what you'd see if you have a promotion relegation game, all the other countries might actually... Uh, participate even more or put more effort in like the Romanians of the of the world you you could see that extra step being put in place um, and it might not be Georgia who are the best in the tier two it could be someone else um, so from a development point of view it's definitely exciting it's encouraging for those guys because they're going to be thought of they're going to be included in in, in, a, in a, a magnificent tournament like the Six Nations so yeah it's it's 50 50 personally I would stick to what it is at the moment, Six Nations, and um, see what World Rugby does with the World uh, this Nations Championship. I mean, it's on, it's off, it's finalised, and Six Nations unions aren't quite happy with it, so I think there's still going to be a lot more talk of it uh, coming up, because I think there's still a lot of 
uh, drama and um, logistics that need to be in place in order for this tournament to be finalized. But for me, yeah, I'd stick to, to, to the traditional Six Nations. Um, I've, I've loved every minute of it. I think it's exciting. And I like the Italian team. I want to give them an opportunity to, to fight and develop. Rugby is changing in the world. We are seeing these, uh, more, more competitiveness from these lower order teams. I mean, Fiji can never count out because they're competitive. Look at, look at how far Argentina, and I'm not saying they're, too, too, they're definitely not, but look at how far they've come in, in the development. Two years ago, they weren't really anywhere. And I mean, Argentina are now competing. They're the top, the provincial side, the Jaguars are the top in Super Rugby in the South African Conference. So we've seen development. You've, like I said about Scotland earlier, you've watched them come a long way. Wales, I mean, they are on an amazing success story of two to three years ago where they weren't winning much. Now they are the Six Nations Grand Slam champions, which is an unbelievable success story. So we're seeing things happen. I mean, even Ireland, yes, they had a rough year this year, but you can't forget what happened last year in the Six Nations and beating the All Blacks, beating Australia. I mean, those were big accomplishments for these teams. Eddie Jones was dominant with England, and they're starting to progress and get better and better. So rugby changes, and who knows? Maybe Italy will become a little bit more competitive and surprise us, like beating a team like France or Scotland again. I mean, anything is possible in this wonderful sport we call rugby. I mean, Japan, South Africa, in the 2015 World Cup, who would have thought that Japan the Japan rugby team would have beaten the Springboks. Not many people thought of that, but they did because it's at a competitive level. So if you encourage Tier 2 nations by putting this in place, it definitely creates an opportunity for development and opportunities for these guys to really go at it. And through that, they get more exposure and get contracts overseas. So the rugby's developing, it's growing, it's getting better, it's getting stronger, and it's allowing for more opportunities. So, it, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a two-way street here. It's, it's great for development, um, but also you've got your his, history of the tournament, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, it will, it, it will be a very interesting thing to implement um, if it does. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but the more the time the Six Nations, people are getting tired of seeing the Italians constantly at the bottom. They want to see a change. They want to see a development. And I get that. I really do. Because it's boring having the, the predictable season. I mean, for example, a lot, that's the, um, a lot of people's problem with the Rugby Championship. You've got the All Blacks winning it for so many years in a row now. Um, it's, it's, it's really a battle for the second. Um, I think that's going to change this year, I really do, but it's those kind of things. If you look at Six Nations, I mean, you had England, Ireland, now Wales. I mean, it's been absolutely amazing. It's it's unpredictable. You can't really predict who's going to go what and where. And um, I think if you kick out um, and make it five nations, it's definitely going to become more competitive definitely going to become more intense if you keep the Italians you'll probably see them again at the bottom unless something happens and we see a moment like in Japan or a, a moment where teams just come a long way and develop and change if Scotland could do it or if any other nation could do it why the hell can't the Italians not do it I mean Benetton Treviso had a very good um, a tournament in the Pro 14, there was a lot of improvement, so that's all good positive news for Italian rugby. It's just how they developed, how they coached, how everything's implemented within. So I believe there is hope for um, Italian rugby, and I think it's just going to take time. But also, bringing this promotion relegation system, you might get the Italians playing harder so that they don't get to that opportunity, and then you could see an upset like France or Scotland. On the bottom, you never know. Maybe even England. England were fifth last year. So it could have been them. You just don't know. And that's the beauty of the tournaments of Six Nations. It's so unpredictable. And I think that's what brings us so much excitement. So for me, I'd keep it the way it is. Keep it as Six Nations. Um, see how it progresses. I mean, if the Italians are bottom for another two, three, four years, then maybe implement and bring something different in to spice that tournament up. But again, so much is going to happen if this Nations Tournament or Nations Championship gets in. Then we're going to see a little bit more changes. So we'll have to wait and see until till then. But for now, I'll keep, with, um, keep things the way they are because it's a fantastic tournament. It's exciting, it's intense, and it's definitely competitive. But hey, who knows? Italy did beat the Springboks too. 
Um, so they have caused upsets, they have caused surprises. There is room for improvement, but they do show spark here and there. So do not count them out. I really do believe that. So we'll have to wait and see. There is World Cup still. There is next year's Six Nations. Anything can happen. So much rugby. Oh, I love it. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Make sure you hit the bell notifications so you don't miss another video. So much more to come. Rugby Championship is a month away. We've got um, the finals of the Super Rugby that I will definitely recap and predict. We've got a lot coming up. So hit the subscribe button and join this journey. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and never give up. Cheers. Make sure you subscribe to his channel for all rapid content. Stay safe and never give up.